The time has finally come to see how the NOR and NAND gates can be used to create any other logic gate. Let's dive right in. We start with the NOT gate. This is the easiest gate of all. You only need one NOR gate to create an inverter. Simply tie both inputs together. So whatever you input, you get the opposite output. Now let's look at the NAND version of the NOT. It is the same. Both inputs are tied to share the input, and the output is the reverse. So take a second look at both of these setups. Follow the logic for yourself. For inputs A and B, the inputs are always the same, 0, 0, or 1, 1. Whether AND or OR, the output would be the same as the input. Since these are actually NAND and NOR gates, the output is negated. So, for input of 0, we get an output of 1. And for an input of 1, we get an output of 0. Next, we will look at the AND gate using NOR logic. This will require three NOR gates to accomplish. Our inputs A and B are both single inputs to their own NOR gate, just like with the NOT gate. These two gates' outputs are then the inputs for the third NOR gate, which supplies our output. So, let's make a truth table with the four possible input combinations and see what happens. When A and B are both zero, their NOR gates will output ones. These ones are now the inputs to the final NOR gate. When NORed, two ones will output zero. So, 0 and 0 give us 0. Now, because this is symmetric, we can knock out A equals 1 and B equals 0 at the same time as A equals 0 and B equals 1. Let's make A equals 1 and B equals 0. Both of these get inverted at the input NOR gates. Now the third NOR gate has inputs 0 and 1. When we NOR a 0 and a 1, the output is 0. So the output for opposite inputs are both zero. Last, inputs A and B are both one. As always, the first two NORs invert these values to zero. The last NOR has two inputs of zero. This will of course give us a final output of one. So two ones will give us an output of one. You can now see the truth table is that of an AND gate. We're going to do the same now with the NAND gate. Wow, this is very simple looking, and it should be. That second gate, which is our output, is just an inverter using a NAND gate. And the NAND gate is the AND gate, but inverted. So this should make total sense. The first NAND gate outputs the inverse of an AND gate, just like we learned in Unit 3-4. The second NAND gate acting as a NOT gate, flips the output back to that of an AND gate. Pretty cool, huh? Now we're going to look at the OR gate using NOR logic. This is a very simple circuit requiring only two NOR gates. You should recognize the logic here since it is reminiscent of the AND gate using NAND logic. Since OR is the negation of a NOR gate and vice versa, we need only tack an inverter on to the end of the initial NOR gate. So, this one is also extremely intuitive, as long as you recognize what you are looking at. A NOR gate and an inverter, which flips a NOR output to that of an OR output. It's time to look at the OR gate using NAND logic. Does this look familiar to you? Well, it should. This is the exact same setup used to make an AND gate using NOR gates. Only now we have NAND gates and the output will be that of an OR gate. Let's be sure by making a truth table. When inputs A and B are both zero, their first encounter is with a NAND gate which is operating as an inverter. So the zeros become ones. These ones now go to the final NAND gate as inputs. The two ones, when NANDed, become zeros. So, 
inputs 0 and 0, output a 0. Next, we have symmetry in our circuit once again, so it doesn't matter which input is 1 as long as the other is 0. Our next two answers will be the same. Since we used A equals 0 and B equals 1 for the AND gate made of NORs, let's use A equals 1 and B equals 0 here. The input NAND gates invert those inputs, and so we have 0 and 1 on their outputs. These are now the inputs to the final NAND. The output of a NAND when inputs are opposite is 1. So, for inputs of 0 and 1, no matter the order, the output is 1. Finally, both inputs are 1s. The initial inverter makes them zeros. The final NAND gate with inputs of 0 and 0 will output a 1. So, for two inputs that are 1, the output will also be 1. And there you have it. The truth table is that of an OR gate. Okay, so the NOT gate, AND gate, and OR gates were all pretty simple. Let's get a little bit more complicated by making a NAND gate using NOR gates. Sure, it's four gates, but really, we can break this down into two very simple parts. Take a good look at it. Do you recognize anything? Well, let's start at the end and work our way back. That last NOR gate is an inverter, right? Now, what do we need to invert to get the output of a NAND gate? That's right, an AND gate. So, if we shift our focus to the first three NOR gates now, this is just the circuit for an AND gate. So to make a NAND gate using NOR gates, make an AND gate using NORs, and then tack on an inverter at the end. How about a NOR gate using NAND logic? Pause real quick and see if you can whip it up without seeing the answer first. Okay, it is time for the big reveal. If you made an OR using NAND gates and then tacked on a NAND inverter to the end, then you've got this down. But now, it's time to play with the big boys. It is time for the XOR gate using NOR logic. Here we are. Five NOR gates to make this happen the way we want. I've drawn this so that there are three distinct sections. We're going to make a truth table. And now, let's follow this circuit through all four combinations of inputs. Our first section is the input. When A and B are both zero, they go through a NOR style inverter and become ones. Now we're in the middle section. The top NOR gate has inputs of ones, so it will output zero. The bottom has inputs of A and B, which are both zero. So this NOR gate will output a 1. We are now at the third and final section, the last NOR gate. The top input is 0, and the bottom input is 1. We NOR these two inputs and get an output of 0. So inputs of 0 and 0 give us an output of 0. Next, input A equals 0 and input B equals 1. In the first section, both inputs get inverted, so the output of the top NOR is 1, and the output of the bottom NOR is 0. On to the middle section. The top NOR has inputs of 0 and 1. This will give us an output of 0. The bottom NOR has an input of A and B, which is 0 and 1, respectively. This NOR will output a 0, just like the top NOR. So when we come to the last NOR gate, it has two inputs of zero. Now this, of course, will output a one. So with inputs A equals zero and B equals one, the output is one. Now let's try A equals one and B equals zero. As always, they get inverted in the first section so that the top output is zero and the bottom is one. In the middle section, the top NOR gate has opposite inputs so it outputs a 0. The bottom has inputs A and B, 
which are also at opposite levels. This will also output a zero. The final NOR gate now has inputs of zero and zero, which will output a one. So for inputs A equals one and B equals zero, the output is again one. Last, we have inputs A and B both equal one. The first section inverts these inputs to zero. In the middle section, the top NOR gate has inputs of zero and zero, which outputs a one. The bottom has inputs A and B, or one and one, which outputs a zero. So when we come to the last NOR gate, the inputs are one and zero. This will output a zero. And so for inputs A and B, both equal to one, the output is zero. Looking at our truth table, we definitely have that of an XOR gate. Now, this isn't the only way to make an XOR gate using NOR gates. There is also a way that is more symmetric, and here it is. I wanted to show you the other one so that we could make our way through the entire truth table. Notice that it is still the same number of NOR gates, though. Now go ahead and pause the video and work out the logic for yourself if you like. How about an XNOR gate using NOR logic? You may think you just need to tack an inverter on to the end of the XOR circuit. While that will definitely work, it is not the simplest way to create the circuit. After all, this version of the XOR, which is nice and symmetric, already has an inverter on the end. So really, all we need to do is remove that like so, and there you have it. The XNOR gate is actually simpler than the XOR gate, using one less gate to create. This is in contrast to the negated versions of the AND and OR gates. For those two, the negated was more complex because they require the extra inverter at the end. This is the opposite. It removes the inverter at the end. Now let's make the XOR gate by using NAND logic. Does this look familiar? It is the same as the XNOR gate made by NOR gates. All we did was swap out the NOR gates for NAND gates. Go ahead and pause and take a moment to check the logic for yourself. Pretty cool, huh? And how do you suppose we would make an XNOR gate using NAND logic? If you just tack on an inverter, then there we have it. So that's it. All seven basic logic gates using both NOR logic and NAND logic. We'll revisit these later when we have a better grasp of Boolean algebra. Until next time!